In this video, we're going to set up Expo push notifications for iOS, and I'll show you how to publish your Expo app to an Apple developer account. We're gonna be using nativenotify.com for push notifications. You'll wanna to go to nativenotify.com and create a free account if you haven't already. That should take you to a page like this. Click create an Expo app. That should take you to a page like this. You'll first need to follow the start here instructions. Copy these install commands. Install those packages. Next, in your app.js file or your index.js or tsx file, if you're using Expo 52 or above, import this register in and push token function. Copy this register in and push token. Your app ID and app token are already in there for you. Post that at the top of your index file or app file. And push notifications are actually already set up for iOS production. From here on, we're going to create an Expo build and publish that to an Apple developer account. So your next step, if you haven't already, is you're gonna need the EAS CLI. So you can NPM install globally the EAS CLI. If you haven't already, EAS login. And this next part is really important. Say EAS in it in your app. What this does is it creates a project ID connected to EAS. This is required for push notifications to work. I'm going to go ahead and test out this app locally on my phone to make sure I can receive a push notification. And so run NPX Expo start. Make sure to open this up on an actual device using Expo Go. Once the app is open up on an actual device, you you should see this log that says you can now send a push notification. You successfully registered your native notify push token. And so I'm going to come here and send myself a push notification using this form, or you can use an API to send the push notification test. And as you can see, my notification just appeared right there. If you see the notification, that means everything is set up correctly. This means you're ready to go ahead and publish your app to the App Store. You can click on the iOS instructions at the top of the screen to see how to do that. Your first step is you're gonna wanna run EAS build, and I'm gonna make this split screen so you can see everything. So run EAS EAS build. I'm just going to go down to iOS. Step three is to select yes to the do you want to log into your Apple account. I'm going to say yes. You do need an Apple developer account for this to work. Next one, it says generate a new Apple distribution certificate. Say yes. When it asks for generate a new Apple provisioning profile, say yes. This is really important. If it says, would you like to set up push notifications? You do need to say yes, even though you're using native notify, you need to say yes to this question or push notifications will not work in production. So say yes. When it says generate a new Apple push notification service key, say yes. And I apologize. I actually told you the wrong thing. So whenever it says generate a new push notification service key. I got confused here. It says you're supposed to say yes to reuse the push key. So if you already have a push key available, you should just reuse it because you can reuse push keys for multiple apps. However, if you do not have a push key, you should say yes to that question. The reason why I say you should reuse your push key is you're only allowed to have up to two Apple push keys, which is fine if you don't have up to two push keys, but I, in my account, have more than one push key. I have two push keys, so I should have said no to that question. Now, at this step, if you ever see a warning like this, it's letting you know you can only have two Apple keys generated on your Apple developer account. So if you have like a test one, you'll have to revoke one of them to create a new one. The great thing about these push keys though is you can use them as often as you want to with as many apps as you want to. Normally this would ask, would you like to reuse the push key? You should just say yes to that and reuse either of the push keys you've already created. Because like I said, you can have as many apps use the same push key. But if you're in this situation, you wanna revoke one of your test push keys, you can do that. That's what I'm gonna do. You have to click the right arrow to show a green dot. Once it's green, you can click return to revoke an old one and have a new one created. But like I said, normally at step seven, it just asks if you would like to reuse a push key and you should just say yes. And now it's creating your build. Once the build is finished, all you have to do from there is say EAS submit dash 
dash platform iOS. You'll come back to the terminal, paste that there, click return, select the build that was just created. Then once you go to your app store connect.apple.com account, you can find your app, click on it, and then you can come over here to test flight and you'll see the latest version that you just uploaded here. You'll probably have to click on a button that says something like manage and then okay. And then your app will be ready to use in the test flight iOS app. You can download test flight on your iPhone. And after you log in, you should be able to see the app in your test flight. You'll want to make sure to come down here to the internal testers. Make sure your iOS email is here so that when you log in using that email the new test flight app is inside of the test flight app and then you should be able to open up the app on your phone and your phone should receive push notifications as well even in test flight mode once you're happy with it in test flight mode you can go ahead and go to distribution you can fill out this information to go ahead and publish it on the apple app store and after your app is live on the app store you can come back to nativenotify.com to the send page to send push notifications manually or you can come down here to see the API. Now this will send push notifications to all of your users at once. If you want to send push notifications to individuals, you'll need to come back to the docs page, click ND push. This is how you send push notifications to individuals using an API that looks something like this. You'll end up registering a sub ID with us. This could be your user ID. And then whenever you wanna send a push notification to that individual, you post using the sub ID that you registered with us. You can watch this video. I'll link it at the end of this video. You can watch that video to know how to send push notifications to individuals. And that is how you install and send push notifications to iOS devices using nativenotify.com. Let us know what you thought or any questions you had in the comments below. Don't don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.